What's going on everyone? So Buddy Hield is officially available and many Laker fans really want Buddy Hield. I completely get it. Deadeye Shooter with this roster would be ridiculous. I mean, imagine all the open looks Buddy Hield would get. He's one of the best three-point shooters in the entire league. Uh, he's a guy that could definitely make an impact on this Lakers roster. And he's also the, like, the one that got away, right? He's the one that like Lakers have literally traded for twice and both times got denied. Uh, the one was with Sacramento. And that deal was done, getting ready to be finalized. And then Anthony Davis and LeBron James won to Russell Westbrook. Jeannie told Rob, go get Russ. So we miss out on uh, Buddy Heald. He ends up going to the Pacers. And then follow that up to last offseason, where Rob had a deal done for Buddy Heald and Miles Turner with two first-round picks for Russell Westbrook. And then Jeannie at the last minute vetoed that trade. So it's like Buddy Heald is the guy that every year it just seems like He's a guy that we are this close to getting, and we've needed him desperately the last few years. But this year, we're not in that point of desperation. We don't need him that badly. Uh, would he be nice? Sure, right? Like if he, and I'm not saying that this will happen, but it's not unlikely. We've seen this happen almost every year. But let's say Buddy Hield ends up getting traded to a team for salary, right? You get a team like San Antonio or something like that that wants to unload some guys or whatever or get an asset or something, and they work it out. And then Buddy Heald's like, I don't want to be here. Okay, we'll buy you out. And they want the, the salary hit. And they buy him out, and then he gets waived, and he goes and signs with the Lakers. Sure, sign him up immediately. Again, not saying that that'll happen. He is too good. He is too valuable. There is a team that very likely will trade for him and want him. Problem is that the Lakers don't really have a way to trade for him right now. Now, you could do a D-low for Buddy Heald swap, like, evenly swap uh, it works out perfectly uh, but you'd have to wait till like December for that to happen and I don't know if Buddy Heald's going to be on the market that long could be right could make sense maybe they wait on it or maybe he really wants to go to the Lakers and he's like hey I'll kind of write it out until we're able to work out a deal with the Lakers that could be a possibility but even then let's say that he doesn't get traded right and you can get to the point now where you can do a D-Lo for Buddy Heald swap. I wouldn't do it. Now, if you could get Buddy Heald and Miles Turner and give up, say, like D-Lo and Rui to go get those two guys, then I would do that. But if you're just swapping D'Angelo Russell for uh, Buddy Heald, I just I think you're going backwards rather than forward. No question Buddy Heald does, would fit with this roster, right? He would fit seamlessly. He's a guy that would be a much-needed three-point shooter. But D'Angelo Russell was more dynamic, all around the better player, and almost had the exact same stat line as Buddy Heald as, like, the third or fourth option, where Buddy Heald, in a lot of ways, was, like, the second option on the Indiana Pacers. And so when you look at these two and you look at the comps of these two, one, Buddy Heald is older. You have Buddy Heald, who's 30. D'Lo is 27. Buddy Heald last year averaged 16.8 points, 5 rebounds, 2.8 assists. D'Angelo Russell averaged 17.8, so 1 point more, 3 rebounds, and 6.2 assists. This is with the Lakers. This isn't for those, this is just for the Lakers, right? Then, Buddy's stat line was 45.8% from the field, 42.5% from three, 51.8% uh, total from the field. And that was on 8.5 uh, three-point attempts. So he shot 42.5% on 8.5 three-point attempts. D'Angelo Russell, again, stat line of 17.8, 3, and 6.2, shot 48.4% from the field goal, which is almost 3 points or 3% 3 better than Buddy Heald total from the field. He shot 41.4% compared to 42.5%. So he shot 1% worse than Buddy Heald from three-point range, and Buddy Heald is one of the best three-point shooters in the entire league. And he shot 55.5% from the field total compared to 51.8%. D'Lo was a better overall shooter in every, every category, except for three-point shooting, but he was only off by 1%. He did take two less three-point attempts, though. He took 6.5 attempts compared to 8.5 attempts. So, nearly identical. D'Lo gave the exact same production and output as Buddy Heald did, but D'Lo is more dynamic. They're both defensive liabilities. 
So neither of these two are going to be guys like, like if Buddy Heald was actually like a good defensive player, then I'd be like, yeah, it kind of makes sense, right? Because you could, what you could do is you could have Austin Reeves who wants to play point guard. He wants to be on the ball more. The Lakers have publicly said that they want him on the ball more and that they want to give him the opportunity to play point guard. So it's like, okay, well you could go swap D'Lo and allow that to happen. And Buddy Heald is a better defensive player. So that, but the problem is he's not. Right, So the only way that this makes sense is if you believe that Buddy Heald is a player you could keep long term and D'Lo is eventually going to leave. Right, So for example, you have D'Lo who is a, on a 1 plus 1. Let's say he has a great year, he could just leave and there's nothing the Lakers could do about it. Right, I mean obviously the Lakers would have a bird right so they could re-sign him or he could opt in and they keep him. But... If Buddy Heald, who's a free agent after this season, if they're able to work out an extension with the Lakers, or or let's say Buddy Heald is like, hey, I'll sign long term, right? Then maybe you go and do the deal because it's like, all right, we're we'd get the same kind of offensive output. You could kind of put the ball in uh, Reeves' hands more, and Buddy Heald will be able to keep for the next five years. Where D'Lo, we might only have for a year or two, right? If it's kind of a more long-term, longevity type play, then I can see that. I can understand that. But again, what are you going to have to give up, right? Because D'Lo's the better player. Now, if you're getting Buddy Heald and like a a second round pick or two second round picks for D'Lo, because again, D'Lo is the better player, then great. Sure, why not? Why not do that, right? Especially if Buddy Heald you see more in your long-term plans, right? But if... You can't do that, and you have to give up a second, or you have to give up two seconds to go get Buddy Heald. That makes no sense. You're giving up a better player to go and get somebody, and you're giving up assets on top of that. So it comes down to what they, what Indiana would be willing to do, and do they value D'Lo also? Like, do they see D'Lo as like, okay, we could have him and Tyrese Halliburton playing alongside each other. D'Lo was very good off the basketball. Right, and that would also give them another player, three level score, dynamic type guard that could be beneficial alongside their roster. Right, maybe you could do something like that. Uh, but get it, just it boils down to what would actually end up costing the Lakers to go trade D'Lo when I think D'Lo fits this team just as well, if not better, because of all the things he's capable of doing. He takes pressure off of LeBron and doesn't allow him. He can play off the ball more, which is what he wants, right? He could slot in and play excellent off the ball alongside LeBron, alongside Reeves. He's coming off of his best shooting year, right? He he seems to really embrace that. And then, like, the last little argument is I know a lot of people are really, like, upset with D'Lo because of his lackluster performance, especially in the Western Conference Finals. We don't even get to the Western Conference Finals if it wasn't for him. And secondly, it's not like we have no idea what Buddy Heald in the playoffs would look like. What if we go and trade for Buddy Heald and he's just completely unplayable, right? Because the problem with the problem with a pure scorer and shooter is we saw it with D'Lo, but Buddy Heald is more centric when it comes to just the way he scores the basketball, right? Like... If their shot isn't falling, they become unplayable. And that is a real concern with Buddy Heald. If his shot isn't falling and he completely disappears, then the Lakers are in big trouble. Buddy Heald has never been in an actual playoff game. He has zero playoff stats. We have no idea what he would look like in the playoffs. And that's not to mention the whole, you know, curse of like Lakers go and sign a, a shooter. Right, like look at Malik Beasley last year. Malik Beasley was one of the best shooters, three point shooters in the league last year. Comes to Lakers and literally was unplayable because he couldn't buy a bucket to save his life. I don't think Buddy Hield will do that, right? But you know, you never know. It is a question mark. So personally, I'm keeping D'Lo unless the Lakers, like I said, you can work out a deal to get Buddy Hield and Miles Turner. If you could get both, I would do that immediately. To me, that's an absolute no brainer. You go make that happen immediately. I think if you get Buddy Hill to Miles Turner, you're, you're far and away the best team in the league. I don't know if they would trade Miles Turner, but it also depends on how does the season look, right? If they start looking bad and they're like, you know, hey, let's let's try to, 
you know, unload Turner. Turner wants out. He's not happy, right? Maybe you could work something out. Like I said, maybe do like a Rui and D'Lo for Buddy Hill to Miles Turner. If you could do that, great. But unless it's like a long-term play and the Lakers look at Buddy Hill as like, okay, he's he's a complimentary piece that we could bring off the bench and start because D'Lo's never going to be okay coming off the bench. So he's a guy that's okay with whatever. We can have him for the next four to five years, keep it with this roster, keep it with this core, and you know, kind of play the long game with Buddy, then sure. But you also have to get some other assets in that deal. But anyway... As always, this is a discussion, so I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Do you agree with my points? Disagree with my points? Uh, would you rather keep D'Lo? Would you trade D'Lo for Buddy Heald? I have you feel what your thoughts are. I'd love to hear it. Let me know down in the comments.